Hey, thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to talk about the Torah does not command a temple. If you've never heard this before, this probably sounds pretty odd. Sounds kind of ridiculous, I bet. I mean, what do you mean that the Torah doesn't command a temple? Uh, what about all of these rituals and all these sacrifices that are supposed to be done? If they're not supposed to be done at the temple, then what are you talking about? Uh, obviously, the temple is commanded because of all of that. Well, actually, what I want to draw our attention to are those very rituals. I want us to be drawing attention to what the actual law says on this issue. Because it's easy to just kind of skim over these rituals and the descriptions about how these sacrifices are being done because we're not doing them right now. Because the actual system for that, the priesthood, and the uh, structure that the, that the rituals are being done in accordance with is not actually active right now. So it's easy just to kind of skim over them and not really think too much about the exact wordings in those passages. And so what I want us to look at is the actual wordings of these things in the law. And you will see that the Torah does not command a temple. Let's start by looking at Leviticus 4, 3 through 8. The passage refers to the ritual being performed when the priest does wrong. It states that the bull is to be brought to the opening of the tent of meeting. Then the priest is bringing the blood to tent of meeting. And he is spattering it before the divider, which is a part of the tent of meeting. And then he is taking the blood, he is putting some on the altar of incense, which is in tent of meeting. Then the rest he is pouring at the base of the altar, which is at the opening of tent of meeting. These rituals are very specific in how they are supposed to be done, and we're going to be looking at some more of them in very literal wording of the text. They are very specific as to how the sacrifices are being done, as to how these rituals are being performed. And as you will see, many of them explicitly tell us where they are supposed to be done in accordance with which structure they are supposed to be done. Let's continue looking. Exodus 27, 20 through 21. And you... You shall command sons of Israel. And they took to you olive oil, pure, pounded, to light, to cause to ascend lamp continually, in tent of meeting, from outside to partition, which is on the testimony. Aaron and his sons shall arrange him from evening to morning to faces of Yahuwah, enactment of obscurity to their generations from sons of Israel. Exodus 28, 42 through 43. And do to them linen pants, and they shall be on Aaron and on his sons in their coming to tent of meeting, or in their approaching to the altar to minister in hallowed. Exodus 30, verses 18 and 20. And you shall do labor of copper, and his establishment copper to lave, and you shall give him between tent of meeting and between the altar. In coming of them to tent of meeting, they shall lave waters, and they shall not die. Exodus 30, 35 through 36, and you shall do her incense of compound, and you shall give from her to faces of the testimony in tent of meeting, which I shall be meeting to you toward there. Leviticus 1.3 If a scent is his nearing offering from the herd, male, complete, he shall cause to near him to opening of tent of meeting. He shall cause to near him to his acceptance to faces of Yahuwah. Leviticus 1.5 and he shall slay son of the herd to faces of Yahuwah. And sons of Aaron the priests 
shall cause to near the blood, and they shall sprinkle the blood on the altar round about, which is that opening of tent of meeting. Leviticus 3, 1 through 2. And if slaughter of pieces is his nearing offering, if from the herd he is one causing to near, if male, if female complete, he shall cause to near him to faces of Yahuwah, and he shall prop his hand on head of his nearing offering, and he shall slay him, opening of tent of meeting. Leviticus 3, 7 through 8. If sheep he is one causing to near his nearing offering, and he shall cause to near him to faces of Yahuwah, and he shall prop his hand on head of his nearing offering, and he shall slay him to faces of tent of meeting. Leviticus 3, 12 through 13. And if goat is his nearing offering, and he shall cause to near him to faces of Yahuwah, and he shall prop his hand on his head, and he shall slay him to faces of tent of meeting. Leviticus 4, 14 through 18. And the assembly shall cause to near young bull, son of herd, to wrongdoing, and they shall cause him to come to faces of tent of meeting. And the priest, the anointed one, shall cause to come from blood of the young bull to tent of meeting. And the priest shall dip his finger from the blood, and he shall cause to spatter seven strokes to faces of Yahuwah, faces of the partition. And from the blood he shall give on horns of the altar, which is two faces of Yahuwah which is in tent of meeting. And all of the blood he shall spill to foundation of altar of the ascent, which is at opening of tent of meeting. Leviticus 6, 16. And the being reserved from her, Aaron and his sons shall eat. Unleavens she shall be eaten in holy rising. In courtyard of tent of meeting, they shall eat her. Leviticus 6, 26. The priest, the one doing wrong her, shall eat her in holy rising. She shall be eaten in courtyard of tent of meeting. Leviticus 10, 9. Wine and intoxicant must not you shall sip, you and your sons with you, in coming of you, to tent of meeting. Leviticus 12, 6. And in filling of days of her cleansing, to son or to daughter, she shall cause to come lamb, son of his year, to assent, and son of dove or turtle dove, to wrongdoing, to opening of tent of meeting, to the priest. Leviticus fourteen eleven, And the priest, the one cleansing, shall cause the man to stand, the one cleansing himself, and them, to faces of Yahuwah, opening of tent of meeting. Leviticus 14.23 And he shall cause them to come in the eighth day to his cleansing, to the priest, to opening of tent of meeting, to faces of Yahuwah. Leviticus 15.14 and in the eighth day he shall take to him two turtle doves, or two sons of dove. And he shall come to faces of Yahuwah, to opening of tent of meeting, and he shall give them to the priest. Leviticus 15.29 And in the eighth day she shall take to her two turtle doves, or two sons of dove. And she shall cause them to come to the priest, to opening of tent of meeting. Leviticus 16, 7. And he shall take two of the goats, and he shall cause them to stand to faces of Yahuwah, opening of tent of meeting. Leviticus 16, 16 through 17. And he shall cover on the hallowed from defilements of sons of Israel and from their transgressions to all of their wrongdoings, 
and so he shall do to tent of meeting, the one tabernacling with them in midst of their defilements. And all human shall not be in tent of meeting, in coming of him to cover in hallowed unto his going forth. Leviticus 16.23 And Aaron shall come to tent of meeting, and he shall strip clothes of the linen which he wrapped in coming of him to the hallowed, and he shall cause to deposit them there. Leviticus 16.33 And he shall cover holiness of the hallowed, and tent of meeting, and the altar. Leviticus 17.8-9 and to them you shall say, Man, man, from house of Israel and from the sojourner, which shall sojourn in their midst, which he shall cause to ascend ascent or slaughter, and to opening of tent of meeting, he shall not cause him to come, to do him to Yahuwah, and the man, the he, shall be cut from his peoples. Leviticus 19.21 and he shall cause his guilt to come to Yahuwah, to opening of tent of meeting, ram of guilt. Leviticus 24.3 From outside to partition of the testimony, in tent of meeting, Aaron shall arrange him from evening unto morning to faces of Yahuwah continually, enactment of obscurity to your generations. Numbers 3, 6 through 7. Cause to near rod of levy, and cause to stand him to faces of Aaron the priest, and they shall minister him. And they shall guard his guard, and guard of all of the congregation, to faces of tent of meeting, to serve service of the tabernacle. Numbers five seventeen. And the priest shall take waters, holy ones, in article of scratch, and from the dust which shall be in floor of the tabernacle. Number 610. And in the eighth day he shall cause to come two turtle doves or two sons of dove to the priest to opening of tent of meeting. Leviticus 613. This is direction of the sequestration. In day filling days of his sequestering, he shall cause him to come to opening of tent of meeting. Leviticus 6.18 And the sequestration shall shave, opening of tent of meeting, head of his sequestering. Numbers 8.19 And I gave the Levites, ones being given, to Aaron and to his sons from midst of sons of Israel, to serve service of sons of Israel in tent of meeting, and to cover on sons of Israel. And striking shall not be in sons of Israel in approaching of sons of Israel to the hallowed. Numbers 8, 24 through 26. This is which is to Levites from son of twenty-five year and toward above, he shall come to mass mass in service of tent of meeting. And from son of fifty year, he shall return from mass of the service, and he shall not serve further. And he shall minister his brothers in tent of meeting to guard guard, and service he shall not serve as thus you shall do to Levites in their guards. Numbers 18, 1 through 3. And Yahuwah said to Aaron, You and your sons and house of your father with you, you shall bear iniquity of the holiness. You and your sons with you, you shall bear iniquity of your priesthood. And moreover, your brothers, rod of levy, scepter of your father, caused to near with you, and they were obligated on you, and they ministered you, and you and your sons with you, to faces of tent of the testimony.
and they shall guard your guard and guard of all the tent. Numbers 18, 21. And to sons of Levi, behold, I gave all tenth in Israel to inheritance, change of their service, which they are one serving service of tent of meeting. Numbers 18, 23. And the Levi shall serve, he, service of tent of meeting, and they, they shall bear their iniquity, enactment of obscurity to your generations, and in midst of sons of Israel they shall not inherit inheritance. Numbers 18.31 And you shall eat him in all rising, you and your house, that he is higher to you, change of your service, intent of meeting. Deuteronomy 12.5 To the rising which Yahuwah your Elohim shall choose from all of your scepters to place his name there. To his tabernacling you shall inquire, and you shall come toward there. Deuteronomy 12.11 And the rising shall be which Yahuwah your Elohim shall choose in him to tabernacle his name there. Toward there you shall cause to come all which I am commanding you, your ascents and your slaughters, your tents and heave of your hand, and all choice of your vows which you shall vow to Yahuwah. Deuteronomy 14.23 And you shall eat to faces of Yahuwah, your Elohim, in rising which he shall choose to tabernacle his name there. So at this point I want to ask, where is it that we are supposed to do the rituals? Where is it that the Torah commands the rituals and the sacrifices to be done? The tent of meeting. It very clearly and explicitly references the tent of meeting repeatedly and references articles that are placed in conjunction with the tent of meeting as well as specific parts of the tent of meeting. Keep in mind that as you saw, many of these commands have very specific ways that they are supposed to be done. For example, certain situations call for different animals to be offered. Some situations allow for a variety of animals, and some situations allow for only one specific type of animal of a specific male or female and of a specific age. So are we going to go and say, well, we're going to offer a fish instead of a dove? Well, no, we're not. That's not according to what the command says. Or if it says that we are supposed to be bringing an animal that is complete and perfect and doesn't have blemishes, are we going to be bringing forth an animal that has blemishes? Well, no, we're not. Or if it says that we're supposed to be slaughtering it on a particular side of the altar, are we going to go to the opposite side of the altar and slaughter it? Well, no, we're not. And so if we are being told to do it at a specific place, the tent of meeting, where are we going to do it? We are being explicitly told over and over that this is where we are supposed to be doing these rituals. And it may be true that a lot of people have invested in the idea of a temple. A lot of people have invested in their theology and their end times ideas that this somehow relates to the reconstruction of the temple. And there are indeed people out there today that are seeking to make that reality. They are seeking to rebuild the temple and they are taking preparations to do what they think they need to do to make that occur and to make that work. Just because there are people out there that are doing something right now that might have lined up with some past belief that we had does not make that a part of the Torah. As we are going through Deuteronomy 30, 1 through 10, 
Deuteronomy 30 talks about the restoration of Israel, and it explains what is going to go on when Israel is being brought out of all the nations where they've been scattered, and they are being brought back into the land of Canaan. One of the things said throughout this passage is that the blessings are going to be brought upon them the blessings of obeying the commands, because it says they are going to be obeying the commands. One of the blessings is given in Leviticus 26.11. I shall give my tabernacle in your midst. Leviticus 26 very clearly is talking about the people coming into the land, because it is talking about the yield of the land, for example. And so, Obviously, if they're practicing farming, if they are harvesting uh, from their crops, it's going to be in the actual land. It's not going to be while they're in the wilderness. These blessings are for when they're in the land of Canaan. And these blessings are going to come upon the people of Israel as they return to the land of Canaan, as described in Deuteronomy 30. And one of those blessings, as mentioned, is, I shall give my tabernacle in your midst. A lot of people have got this idea that the temple will be rebuilt and the Messiah will come and that will resolve everything. Why, then, does the Torah say that the tabernacle is going to be given in our midst when we return to the land of Canaan? Why is that implied by Deuteronomy 30 and Leviticus 26? The tabernacle is the commanded holy place of the Torah. According to Exodus 25, 8, And they shall do to me holiness, and I shall tabernacle in their midst. If you have ever studied the Torah extensively, you are probably well aware that a generous portion of the Torah is devoted to describing the construction of the tabernacle. This is the commanded place for the rituals. This is the command we are given for how we are to build the house of God. It is the tent of meeting. The tent of meeting the tabernacle, the mishkan, is the commanded holy place of the law. These later traditions and these traditionally accepted prophets that commanded some other place that was not according to the structure of the Torah, that is not according to the commands of the rituals, and that is not according to the place that we were commanded to build for him, should we really be listening to them? Or should we be returning to what the Torah says? The Torah does not command the temple. The Torah commands the tabernacle. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out some of my other videos about other Torah issues, and be sure that you stay in touch so we can continue this discussion. Thanks for watching. Remember the commands. Peace.